welcome to Activities with Mr. Scott. Today, we're in the kitchen because we're gonna be making something very near and dear to my heart and something that we in the Pettit household use quite a bit, mayonnaise. Now, mayonnaise fits in the condiment family. Condiments are things like mustard, ketchup, Frank's hot sauce, oh, so good, tapatio sauce, and I'm sure there are many other things that you could probably fit into the condiment category. But today, we're talking about one of the best condiments and probably one of the most versatile condiments, and that is mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is super easy to make, and at home, the mayonnaise you make is very delicious. And you can customize it in many, many different ways. But for our basic recipe, we only need four ingredients, well, five, five ingredients, and I forgot one. So let's get it. Five ingredients, and they are, Olive oil. Now, this is olive oil, uh, just a regular Kirkland brand olive oil. Normally, we would use the extra virgin olive oil light, and that gives it, that kind of takes the olive flavor out of it. So the mayonnaise that you make, unless you have that olive oil, an extra virgin light olive oil, it's gonna just have a little more olivey taste. Still very delicious, but um, the, the olive flavor does come through a little more. So, we're also going to need apple cider vinegar. Now I believe you can make it with regular vinegar as well, but the apple cider vinegar gives it just a little sweet to go with that tangy. We're going to need a little salt. We're going to need, which is some, this one is an interesting one because we already mentioned it as another condiment, but this is powdered mustard. So you'll need a little powdered mustard. You could also use powdered tartar, okay? And one egg. Now, later on, when our chickens start laying eggs, I'll be able to make you a mayonnaise kit, much like we did with the birdhouses. But for today, we're gonna use a Costco egg, okay? You're gonna need a few tools as well. Measuring spoons, preferably a one tablespoon and a teaspoon. And you're going to need something to make it in. Now, I'm using this measuring cup, and it's for liquid. And you can see that it's got measurements on here. This is a one cup measuring cup, makes it super easy to make. And finally, you're going to need something to mix it with. Now, we use this, and I call it a thunder stick. This may not be the total brand name, so Cuisinart, don't beat me up over this. But this is a mixer, hand mixer, a little dangerous because these are very sharp, but very safe if used correctly and super easy to make mayonnaise. Now you can use something else to make mayonnaise, but it's a whisk because this takes a lot more work. So with whisking, uh, you're gonna get, most chefs and my brother and um, niece will tell me that whisking is the only way to make mayonnaise. However, I feel that carpal tunnel is also avoidable by using our little thunder stick. So we're gonna use that to make the mayonnaise. You'll see it makes it super quick, super easy. First things first, we will need a little less than one cup of olive oil. Now the reason being is that this makes about a cup of mayonnaise and for us as a family that lasts us about a week. Now there are no preservatives, no other additives in this mayonnaise and so our safety line for this has been that we, if we don't use it within a week, we typically will let it go a week and a half and then we'll toss whatever's left over. But before we get started, I wanna make sure we do one import, very important thing. And this isn't as important this is important not only in the kitchen, but also in regular life, especially nowadays. I'm gonna wash my hands. Now, if I had a song for 20 seconds, I would play it. However, I don't, but we may put one in and just drown this sound out. So for now, you're gonna hear me washing hands and maybe counting in my head, and I might be exactly 20 seconds, and I'm making this water as hot as possible so that, so that I, Make sure my hands are nice and clean, because again, this mayonnaise is all natural. All right, now that we've got clean hands, let's make some mayonnaise. So again, I have a one cup measuring cup. You can see that it's got the lines. I'm gonna pour my olive oil in. Ah, before we do this, let me talk about the order. Now my wife, Miss Ashley, will say that there is an exact way to do this. And when I'm baking I'm, or cooking, I'm a little less worried about measurement than she is. But I have found through multiple runny versions of mayonnaise 
that there is a specific order to make this in. Now, I read a book uh, called, A Man Called Ove, O-V-E, olive oil, vinegar, egg. Now, somewhere in there these go in, but it wasn't a man called Ovisum, salt and mustard. It was just a man called Ove. Now, the reason that makes, helps me remember is because he was always a rule follower in the book. Very stern about the rules and made sure that everyone was following the rules. So, for me, who's not much of a rule follower, making mayonnaise, this this what helps me remember how to make it the right way. So, first ingredient goes in. Oh, olive oil. And we fill the olive oil to a little above three quarters. Not quite a full cup. The reason being is that when we add our other ingredients, it'll make it up to a one cup line. So there's our little less than one cup of olive oil, okay? Now, ove, V for vinegar. This is our apple cider vinegar, and I'm putting in two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Now you'll see, and science is kind of fun, that oil and vinegar, surprisingly, just like water, do not mix. So I've got two tablespoons of olive oil in there. Or excuse me, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You might be able to see the separation, you may not. O-V-E, egg. E for egg. Now we'll put our egg in. And it kind of sits in there. Now what's happening now is that the vinegar, we want to save our eggshells for the garden, so I'm going to put it in our little compost trash bin. The vinegar is already starting to kind of cook the egg a little bit. Now the olive oil is stopping that a little, but um, that helps us make a nice thick mayonnaise. If I were to do this in a different order, my mayonnaise, while it would turn out as mayonnaise flavor, would be like mayonnaise milk, which is not as appetizing and certainly not easy to do on a sandwich. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt. And I, again, I like to measure. Come on. But I know that when cooking, measuring may not be as important. When baking, measuring super important. And then I also put about a teaspoon of mustard. And there you have it. Our ingredients are in the mayonnaise. Now the fun part. We grab our thunder stick. Ooh, let me back it up so you can see exactly what happens. Now the tendency to mix is when you start mixing, you kind of move it around, move it around. With mayonnaise, we don't want to do that. Again, lessons learned through mistakes. With mayonnaise, we just leave it in the bottom. Make sure this is on a very high setting, highest setting possible. It won't splatter everywhere, I hope. And then we just blend. And as what you'll see is it turns white here and as it thickens, the oil will incorporate into the egg and vinegar, thus making a nice thick mayonnaise. I just leave the stick here, let it go. Wait patiently. Now with whisking, can you imagine how fast I'd have to be going to whisk? Oh, my elbow hurts already. Sorry, chef friends, but I'm gonna go with the thunder stick. Work harder, not smarter. No, flip that, smarter, not harder. Now, as I can see, it's starting to thicken up. Now I can sort of bring the stick up very slowly and it'll start pulling in the oil that's sitting on top of the mayonnaise. You'll hear it as it starts to pull a little uh, air into it as well. And now the mayonnaise, I can feel it getting super thick. Very slowly moving this around as it incorporates the egg and the vinegar and the salt and mustard. And then, voila. Now, let me grab a spoon, and I will just show you that the mayonnaise we have made stands up to the earthquake test, mostly. That was a small earthquake. But you can see that this is nice, thick mayonnaise, and mm, tastes delicious. And that is how you make mayonnaise. Now, I remember I said earlier that we could customize it a little bit. Well, I do love Frank's Red Hot. And so I will put this in my mayonnaise 
and use it as a dip for, let's say, dino nuggets, in case you're interested in those, or um, tater tots, or vegetables. Um, we also use something called everyday seasoning. And when we talk about condiment pasta with our special guest chef that's going to join us next episode, she will show you how to make a delicious lunchtime pasta with our homemade mayonnaise. Okay? Now, go ahead and enjoy your homemade mayonnaise. Practice makes perfect, so don't be upset with yourself if you don't get it right the first time. I've gone through many an egg and many a tablespoons of vinegar to make sometimes milky mayonnaise. However, this turned out amazingly thick and smooth and creamy and super easy to make. So the next time you're looking for a condiment for your sandwich or for your egg salad, go ahead and make yourself a homemade batch of mayonnaise and enjoy. Thank you for joining us on Activities with Mr. Scott. I'll see you again soon. Oh. Mm -hmm.